Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreon, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out of thanks and appreciation to Guns of Navarone, RMP, Troy Shuka, Bose Nail, Joseph Pizarro, Samson, Maris, Mobile Mac 777, Neo the One, Lost Cat FE, Rob W, Open Minded, Reese Pound, Del West Watson, Mike, Muted, Dick Earth Skeptic, NA Literalist, Maria Neelands, Unbelievable Productions, Blue Ridge Ranger, Rob H, The Real Gabster, Windrider, Liam Nedrick, Abraham Mohammed, Dave Rakia Gafford, Nyby, Adrian Quintana, Skeptic936, Life is Short, Fireball X, The Flat Earth Channel.com, Texas Mike, Edwin Johnson, Kirsten Smith, Alexander Main, and David Wayne Foster. So another huge massive thank you to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now I'm going to hand over to whoever is in Discord and Google so you can enjoy their conversation while I set it for today's live show. I just posted a uh, short video on Master B and pointing out the six minute mark. If you want to go up to that and get a screenshot of that and read the subtitle. Me a minute to get past the ad. Yeah. You need the audio. Yeah. yeah. Want me to click on the just music? Mark? Yeah, just read the subtitle and the picture and the video referencing that subtitle at the six minute mark. Are the universes with different laws of nature? <laughs> they can't even get this one to work with the laws of nature we have. <laughs> Love it. Oh, it's great. The music's great on this video, by the way. Somebody I need to promote? No, I just was waiting for your show and I came up on the feed of something and I said, oh, this looks interesting. And then the fantasy of their multiverses and everything else and the sizes of all these so-called planets and the Hubble telescope and the radiation background pictures and blah 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 and then it says at the six minute mark uh these other universes in these multiverses might have different laws of nature and i start cracking up i was like can you get this one to work with the laws of nature that we currently have <laughs> yep they don't work morning good morning, morning. Yeah, they just do cartoons and drawings and this in this one video that they just keep going, you know, they scan back with the camera and show a larger image and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, how'd you get this? Is this uh, your fantasy? I just came into the conversation. I heard he's talking about things not working. He wouldn't be talking about my vehicles, would you? No. There you go. I knew you were going to sneak it in somehow. Nature of reality, Neil. <laughs> Nature of reality. Must have got lost in the transmission somehow, Neil. You know, the funny thing is I never have a problem with transmissions. I meant the show and transmissioning to the show. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to get you off your car. <laughs> we call it a gearbox here. That's kind call of shifty. A gearbox. Yeah, gearbox. that's kind of sh shifty, though, isn't it, Nathan? <laughs> We're starting early, yeah. I'd never stop. You know, if you want someone in the clutch, it's me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll I'm off today so I can enjoy the show without having people. <clears throat> what are you doing? I didn't pay you to do this. 
Jeez. Do what? Sit on the show? Hopefully not. Yeah, like I, like when I'm working, I have my headphones on. And I do have to grab the phone and take it off mute to say something, and I rarely ever do when I'm working. But when I do, they seem to be like right on it. Like, dude, are you freaking kidding me? I just did a whole flight of steps in a theater by myself, blowing down carpet, installing again. You're going to bitch because I get off mute and I said one thing. The joke. <laughs> okay. Well, they are paying you to do work for them, right? I don't blame yes, them, Neil. I, I mean, to work for them, but yes, I that's do right. work right through lunch and I do work right through. Well, I take a coffee break, but I don't take lunch and I don't get to leave that hour early. So there's a lot of politics. But anyway, back on well, flat earth. Well, that no, is my question. Earth. That's, that's somebody overhearing you talking on a flat earth show and telling you off for it. So, you know, don't put your job at risk to discuss the subject of flat earth. So I agree with them, Neil. I mean, if that means that we don't Nathan, get to... Nathan, I did not ask you your opinion, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, he's he's uh, he's on prevailing wage, not a flat uh, salary, so he's okay. Yeah, he only wants opinions that agree with him. My bad. No, it's, it's well, funny, though, because, you know, it's just how quick they, like, could hear it. Like, yo, I, I didn't say anything the whole time. He shows me on an hour. I grabbed the phone, I hit mute, and I said one thing, and you're going to say, I'm not paying you to do this? Well, is there anyone else uh, having earbuds in, or is it just you? No, it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look, Neil, I agree with you. You should get special treatment, and even though they're not paying you to talk on my show, I believe that's you not, could be here anyway, and about. that's free speech. Blah blah blah. You could have pulled the Italian card on them, Neil. The Italian card. Let me think. What is that? Columbus discovered America. You wouldn't even be here without my ancestry. <laughs> <laughs> Problem is, they're Italian too. <laughs> oh. Wow, well, like, it seems so funny to me how, like, they can hear one little thing you say, and it's a, it's a huge theater. You're talking to Neil Simon Theater. It sits like 7,000 or something. I'm all the way on the other end. Anyway. <laughs> well, that's why isn't, that, isn't that kind of the point? Acoustics. I was going to say, that's kind of the point. Anyway. So what I did then was, then, okay. then what I did was, I took it off. <laughs> And I put it on a speaker, and now everybody has to hear the Flat Earth show. Lovely. Oh, I'm all for that. But don't let it affect your work, Neil. Don't let them be pulling you up and disciplining you and calling you union or whatever the hell they do over there. Just do without the aggravation. It just finds me aggravation. <laughs> yes, I, I understand. <laughs> Did he just say define aggravation? No, he said it finds me, I think. Oh. <laughs> That's what I said, it finds me. I still love you, Neil. Anyway, so people are still talking about, I don't get it, like, everything's right out for them. All the evidence is right there. And in, even in the chat the other day, a convirus like, you never show evidence. Is he really serious? Yeah, he's in denial. What he means is, I've not taken. Evidence? What he no. What he means is, I reject and hand wave all evidence you have presented, and therefore there is no evidence that you have presented. That's what he means. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, that sounds right. They could even bring their own citation of Coriolis, and that citation proves our point, and they still say the same thing. This is how they reject evidence. And he said, I got it backwards. That math is reality. Yeah, math's abstract, but he needs it to be reality because all of his arguments come from a mathematical standpoint as opposed to from a standpoint of reality. So he needs math to be reality, and they declare it as so. Well, it's not. But it's maths is just abstract descriptions of things. They don't have to be descriptions of things that are real. But Nathan, if he says math is reality, then the black swan kills him. 
Indeed. I mean, well, they it's translatable out. as a description from physical reality. My point here is that when they say maths is reality, it means that when they can describe something in the abstract, it doesn't even have to be taking place in a world that's real, right, based on the presentation that you've given us here. Well, other universe, other, other universes with different laws of nature. Well, what they're saying is, we can't apply our laws of nature, but mathematically we can come up with a new law of nature for this different planet for the sake of argument, and then argue mathematically within a completely different law of nature that does not apply here. So that means they're describing abstract things that aren't even real. Whereas when you talk about qualification of distance, say, in the black swan, that's maths, right? Well, no, it's describing something that's actually physical and real. Yeah? The only thing that isn't physical and real in that description, if you want to call it mathematical, is the physical horizon that's supposed to be capable of measurement mathematically. But measuring something mathematically in physicality is very different to describing something mathematically that does not exist, which is why they need maths to be reality, because they describe things that don't exist with maths and believe that by describing them, that makes them real. It doesn't. Correct, but it's a nice way of turning it on then when they say it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's a good oh, one. I'm if maths is reality, way. then every distance to horizon can be no more than 1.2 times the square root of the observer's height in feet on a sphere with a radius of 3959 miles, and we can demonstrate it beyond that. So you no longer have a physical geometric sphere to a horizon. You can no longer derive an R value. You no longer got boats and buildings blocked by physical earth curve edges. It's the end of the globe model. Maths is reality, you say. Okay, well, maths says Earth's not a sphere. That's a good one. I'm going to use that. Well then, yeah. well, then they'll say this. They'll say, well, it's reality except there. <laughs> That's as well, they've say. done that. That was, that. that was Rumpus's first reply. Well, we might be a brain in a jar. We're living in, ma in the Matrix then. That's their only response. That's right. Take it into a fantasy world that doesn't exist in our actualization of the world that we actually experience with its natural laws. No, that's not real. So our maths in abstract worlds, they're real. Maths is reality. However, when we show in reality that we can't be on a sphere, we're in the matrix, according to our opponents. Well, that's a frightening image to be a brain in a jar and rumpus in there with us. Yeah, and, and NASA has a stronghold on a lot of people. I realize that, that, that NASA images, whatever they put out, people just believe that they go there, do a violation of the second law of thermodynamics, that that's real, everything is different up there, so they can go up there. They have been to the moon, and they're making plans on going to other planets. It's crazy. Well, there's a name for it. This this little excerpt that you've got me to present, other universes with different laws of nature, is actually a fallacy. It's called a special pleading fallacy. Explain that. Special pleading. Well, it may not do that here, right? It may not be that water behaves in a certain way. Or that we, you know, can have a, a rain of something like diamonds for the sake of argument, right? But over in that world, over there, there's different rules that apply. That's special pleading. I got it, but there's no proof of it. Which just means that under certain circumstances that I'll arbitrarily assign in this instance, that's where it will work. Therefore, it will work. No, well, just I, I, special pleading. I could see how... I could see how they might say that because in that world, it's a special facet of the argument. Look, a special pleading would be you start off with a reification fallacy, say a force of gravity. It gets demonstrated that it isn't in existence. So you take it into a world that doesn't exist and then appeal to that. So you make up a special world, a fourth dimensional space time world that we can't move around in that doesn't exist beyond the description. Well, in that world, you can have pseudo Romanian force space time bending and that manifests itself as a force in reality, even though it's not a force. Well, that will be enough to confuse most people into not realising, A, they've reified into existence a mathematical force that's not a force that you can think of as a force that only exists in a 4D world that isn't in existence beyond the description in maths that, according to them, then manifests itself in a 3D world that only has been superseded because it didn't work. Mathematically. Well, then mathematically, it doesn't add up. No, it doesn't add up. It's been reified into existence, even though it doesn't add up. The maths doesn't actually work for a heliocentric world. There are many flaws and issues. 
But who cares? We don't live in a mathematical reified sphere world. It's merely a model. That's all it is. You know, I, I get the strangest looks now from normies when I say, do you know that the whole thing's a model? And they just look at me like, no, no, it's real. I go, no, no, it's a model. It's all based on math and it's a model. None of it works out in our reality. Most people have a hard time realizing that they're actually living in a philosophy and reifying into existence worlds that don't actually exist. Most people have a hard time dealing with that because what's it boiled down to upon defense? Well, a religious belief because it's not real. Yeah, but, yeah, but Nathan, uh, what, are you saying there's this big conspiracy and NASA's lying to us? I don't know about NASA as a whole because I'm sure there's very honest, upstanding people who are decent people in NASA. But at some level, certainly astronauts I could point the finger at, people are lying to you about the nature of your world and out, uh, outright faking it, lying. You know, there's no two ways about it. The people who are on the ble ble blue screens, green screens, whichever, and on high wires and pretending to be somewhere that doesn't exist, that would be space, a second law of thermodynamics violation, sky vacuum. Well, those people on high wire are liars because they're telling you that they're in a place that doesn't exist. So I can categorically say that some members of NASA might only be a small handful, for all I know, are absolutely overt liars. There's no two ways about that. Not all of them, though. You, I'm sure most of them are honest people working there and think they're doing a very good thing for humanity and are very proud of what they do. Hey, Chocolate. Good morning. Good morning. What's going on, everybody? Mighty fine. Pretty good. But discussing how their math doesn't add up to reality for their model. Not according to a coma virus. Yeah, because math is not reality. Look, for his, as much as his cloak of amenity or being uh, amiable, the coma virus is just as big a zealot as any of the others. Yeah, I'm glad to see he's not your little pet anymore. I'm glad it, you got change, over that. Yeah, I quite like a convirus. You know, I, I don't mind the guy. I don't find him objectionable. I'm mostly indifferent to the pe things that people do find objectionable about him. And those things are being described by you. And they are features of zealotry. Well, I don't underestimate the le level of zealotry in my opponent. He's just another opponent, so the level of zealotry will be the same, as far as I'm concerned. Now, that doesn't change people's personality. Now, on a personal level, number one, who cares what I think personally of anybody who comes here? Number two, it makes no difference to his argument. And number three, it doesn't change what he is. He's here. So 99 times out of 100, that will automatically make him a zealot. You know, he wouldn't be here otherwise. If he was truly blue pill, didn't care, and thought the world was a sphere, he wouldn't need to be here. There'd be no cognitive reason to be here. The fact that they are is because they're needing to find their confirmation bias or prove us wrong or attack us personally to make himself feel better for a few minutes, whatever. But, you know, they're all coming from the same exact place, a place of zealotry. They found out what the reality is and they don't like it. So they want to fight against it. Okay, well, during your five stages of loss and coming to the the coping stage where you can actually move on or maybe reflect on it with a bit of depression. You know, well, those those parts of the process we don't get privy to. We're only subject to the anger, the denial, and the bargaining. That's all we get. We're never going to see virus. There's the odd exception. Very rarely do we see someone who comes along like Tommy. Do we see the vitriol, the ridicule, the anger, the denial, the debating, and then you see the reflection, the depression, the, oh my god, I can't quite believe this is the case. And then the acceptance stage. And now what does Tommy do? Well, he makes flat earth videos debating globids after coming here and debating with us about how the earth's a sphere. Well, that's the exception to the rule. You know, there aren't many cases like Tommy where you get to see the other side of the process beyond bargaining. I mean, that is what this show is, though. You know, the fact that I don't get to see people reach the acceptance stage. You know, if you, if you come here and you think that that's what you're going to find, you'll see a fundy have it presented that nature does not allow for a sky vacuum and you can demonstrate that and it's natural law wouldn't be a natural law if sky vacuum was real now you can present that to somebody and hope in your mind that they'll go oh my god i can't believe i've been lied to but 
that isn't what happens. They aren't coming here to change their belief. They're looking for confirmation bias. The sad thing is they say there's no there's no time limit on grief. <laughs> oh boy, great. The wall to climb between bargaining and depression is a very, very high wall. Because part of the depression that you'll experience upon realisation that you haven't got a leg to stand on when you assert a philosophy as being real, that would be the heliocentric globe earth world, when you come to that realisation, you also know instinctive, instinctively that you've just spent the last however long ridiculing people who have tried to tell you that you've been deceived. Now, you also know that if you in any way try and hear that into your life, you will also be subject to the same ridicule making the wall between bargaining and depression much higher, much more difficult to climb over. I'm sure that's intentional, but that's the, the way it is. Now, I don't know how to gear the show in such a way that I can lower that wall. I don't know how to do it, because as far as I'm concerned, the majority of the bricks are made up of people, and they're ridiculed towards reality. Now, what am I going to do about that as one man? Well, I'm doing it as far as I'm concerned. But those are my limitations. Now, someone can say, well, you could do this, and that would help lower that wall well i'll do it you're already doing it nathan because we're questioning our reality according to how they say our reality is and we're inspecting their model and we're saying well your model says our reality is this but how does that work when we have this and how does this work if we have that and there's your housekeeping question so you're doing it sure but in in the face of concession Concession will still come in the form of denial. For example, nobody claims the horizon is Earth curve, a fundamental denial of the principle that they're fighting for so that they can rebut us. You're saying we are claiming the horizon's Earth curve and you've debunked that, so therefore no one claims the horizon's Earth curve anymore, even though it's a fundamental tenet of the religion I'm here to punt and my images have actually got it labelled as such. Here is Earth curve, pictures of the horizon. So, you know, those are the sort of cognitive steps someone will take to remain in denial. Yeah, but they're embarrassed when they do that because for the longest time, from the beginning of their model, Earth curve is the horizon. It's almost akin to saying, that's not, uh, you know, that's my mother, that's my no, mother, that's, that's my that. mother. And then one day saying, that's not my mother. But well, you've been saying it's your mother all for hundreds of years. Now it's not your mother. Yeah. That Nobody's was Timmy claiming. Clown, right? Say again. That was Timmy Clown, right? Yeah, that's Tim Osman. Earth Debate Live. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. One last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. Now we are joined by 10th man, Arwin, Chocolate Saiyan, father of a soul and child, Neil, Paul, and a whole bunch of people in Discord. So welcome one and all. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Morning, good morning. Hey, George. Hey, Chocolate. 
my camera has crashed. Wonderful. Moving on. <laughs> Any evidence of a physical geometric sphere edge horizon formerly known as Earth curvature? Nonsense. It's really annoying. I put my camera onto a little arm so I could extend it out by about two or three feet. And the first time I've come to use it, it's crashed. Isn't that wonderful? No, Sphere Edge Horizons, we were discussing it in the pre-show. It's nonsense. No evidence of um, Nobody claims the horizon is Earth curvature. That's right, nobody claims the horizon is Earth curvature. Yeah, they do. Globers do. And if you're claiming nobody claims it, then you're only referring to flat earthers because we know there's no earth curve edge horizon physically blocking boats and buildings. It can't be measured. It's beyond the geometric capabilities of a sphere. There is no geometric sphere edge horizon to block boats and buildings. Earth's not a sphere. It should be easy to demonstrate, though. If it was. Yeah, you'd have a oh, hill in the way. Really? Yeah, you'd have a hill in the way between you and targets as asserted in the earth curve mathematics. That's how they say it would be easy to distinguish. You can see a hill between you and targets in the distance. That would be the earth curve edge getting in the way. Right, so if you went to the Grand Canyon and was like one mile away, one foot from the ground, you should be able to see stars below the horizon because it's a big hole in that geometry. Stars below the physical geometric sphere edge earth curve horizon that they claim is blocking your distance. Yeah, you'd be able to get above that based on altitude exactly as depicted in their maths. It still requires you to reify a horizon that you see into a physical geometric sphere edge horizon, which it is not. Well, you'll never see the stars below the horizon, even at the Grand Canyon. It's just... You know, you'll see land beyond it, but you'll never see stars below the horizon. Yeah, well, below what? Not actual location where the sky and ground appear to meet based on optical limitations or limitations of weather. Yeah, well, the, the idea that the Earth is geometric or refracted geometry, which is ridiculous, but... You know, you've got a giant gash in the geometry. Why can't you see stars through it? But why are we looking to the stars to determine where we are on Earth? Why don't they just demonstrate it on Earth? Well, that's what he's saying. He's saying, that's what he's saying, Neil. He's saying that if the Earth was a sphere with a radius of 3950, and then you'd have a geometric physical sphere edge horizon that would block the distant stars as it goes past its physicality. Well, it's we don't. look into the stars, just measure it. What, the physical horizon we don't have? Show me uh, a curve. If there's a curve, show me a curve. Yeah, there's supposed to be one at the horizon. Of course, that maths requires us reify the horizon into a physical sphere edge, which it's not. So when they say, show us the curve, well, how do they show you the curve? Well, they show you the horizon and tell you to believe that it's the sphere edge. Even though we've debunked that. Hence, nobody claims the horizon is Earth curve. They chant. Uh, that's a new chant, by the way, after the Black Swan. Yeah, say it like a flat earther. Nobody claims the horizon is Earth curve. Well, we're hoping to get to that point, but at the moment it's just you that realises the horizon's not Earth curve, even though Tim Osman held up a picture that said this is Earth curve and showed several pictures of a horizon claimed to be blocking the distant things. Any evidence of axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? More nonsense. Uh, they have a 15-degree movement of the luminary called the sun, uh, and they say that's because Earth is turning underneath. And we say, well, if that's the case, then a drone that's hovering or a helicopter or anything that is not attached to the Earth, all it has to do is go up and the Earth should turn under that. But since that secondary reference doesn't happen, then we can discount them saying that the Earth is turning under the sun, it's the luminaries that are turning.
any scientific evidence of gravity? No, it's been dead for 106 years. Einstein threw it under the bus. They're into a whole different 4D world that doesn't exist in our 3D world. How did he get away with that? Imagination. And don't forget, you can't move around in this 4D world either, according to the you know, Globers. You can't move around in a 4D world. How did they say somehow that? or another you can account for the orbit of Mercury <laughs> in the 4D world that we can't move around in or find or do anything with? But yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Paul, what do you mean by that? Hmm? Well, that's what Rumpus said the other day. He says you can't move around in a 4D world. In his 4D model world, you can't move around in it. That's what Rumpus says. Hello, guys. Sorry. Hey, yeah, I mean, lunch. <laughs> that's all right. Don't apologize. So in the 3D world, we can't measure Mercury, but in the 4D world, because of special mathematics, they can measure Mercury. And then how does that convert back to a 3D world? It doesn't. That's why they need to conjure up this other dimension in order to fill the gap. You can't account for the presupposition of an orbit in the 3D world that we live in. Right. Because, come on, that makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> Any evidence of the distance to the sun? What is the sun? No idea, Neil. Why, why do they have songs like, Here Comes the Sun? <laughs> When the sun is not supposed to be the one moving, that's a little weird. Do do do. Well, they they've tricked in a little bit with the language to say that the sun's rising and lowering. You know, kind of puts in your mind that it's not traveling over you. You know. So literally, the language we use debunks the claims that are made. Yeah, that's intentional, just... obviously. Go on, whoever that was. I was going to say it's a trick. It's a, just a tricky way of throwing it in, um, you know, because if the sun's going down below what, you know, like it's it's just a way to slip that in. Yeah, physical geometric sphere edge horizon. And it's the reasoning behind the sun setting is the sun going down what what happens when the sun doesn't go down would, would that be considered a black swan <laughs> something that's supposed to happen on this model but doesn't uh oh speaking of things that don't happen on the model any evidence of the r value earth radius nonsense I, I love the new answer, Neil. <laughs> Everything is nonsense. The evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth. That's really nonsense, but you tell a good story, Nathan. Not my story. <laughs> it's the story well, of Thea. When you tell it the way they have it, it's very good. Recent story, too, eh? We found out recently. It was only from the year 2000. I said the way you tell it, the way they say it, puts a lot of drama into it, but it's nonsense. What, the story of Thea smashing into Earth at a glancing blow and yeah, the debris yeah, coalescing yeah, into the moon. That'd any, be it. Talking of just those stories provided by people in authority, any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics? Email. Email? Another doc Dr. Beffy reference by chance. It's all I have to say. Do you think she's thinking about it though? Or she's just like, I know we can't divine her thoughts, but as people start to put pressure on her, you think in the back of her mind she may be thinking about it or she's just um, caught up in the money? I don't know that, Neil. You like you say, we don't know. Who cares? I don't care about these people's motivations. 
You know, I think Dr. Becky is fully immersed in Globe Belief. Fully immersed. But Arwen will certainly yeah, define her thoughts for you. <laughs> I will do that every single time. We can't know their motivation. And frankly, does the motivation change their objective or their dynamic when they come here or the nonsense that they put out? No, and that's what we're challenging. And I think it should stay that way. I reserve the right to divine people's thoughts. Do whatever you like. I've got, I'm are, not the boss of you. Are we still on the molten iron core? Or did we move on that. from that? No, but go on. No, because uh, over the weekend I was engaging with some ballers on 24-7. You know, I found a interesting citation from an article in Scientific American that kind of shut down his own his whole uh, thinking of how, how we know what's going on in the core. So it goes like this. How, how do we know the temperature talking about the core? The answer is that we really don't, at least not with great certainty or precision. The center of the Earth lies 6,400 kilometers, 4,000 miles beneath our feet but the deepest that it has ever been possible to drill to make direct measurements of temperature or other physical quantities is just about 10 kilometers, six miles. Ironically, the core of the Earth is by far less accessible, more inaccessible to direct probing than would be the surface of Pluto. Not only do we not have the technology to go to the core, but it is not at all clear how will it will ever be possible to do so. End quote. It's how the entire premise of that discussion is how difficult it would be to get to a core, not the fact that the core hasn't been proven, isn't verified, they've got no justification to assume it, they're just talking about how difficult it is to measure, so simultaneously reifying it by saying how difficult it is to qualify it, measure it, whatever. But that still makes the reader think, all oh, right, so it's really difficult to measure the core that we have got, yeah, yeah, that's how I hear it. And telling you that we will never be able to go to it. It's the surface of Pluto is more accessible than the core. <laughs> Think about that. So then why are they allowed to teach it in school then, all right? Unless it could be proven, then it should not be taught in school. It's uh, indoctrination, Neil. It's not teaching. When it was the church doing it, People who opposed it weren't treated very nicely. And if someone came along like you, Neil, to them and said, it's just a religious belief, like precisely what we're doing, <laughs> then you met with a lot of opposition because people don't want to believe that their worldview and the teachings or the master's words that they must abide by, I might add, are in any way false because they must abide by them. And that would just lead to a lot of disdain. And, you know, the average normie just wants to get on with it. And if they say that's how it is and... That's how it is. So you're the person that's banging on the church doors telling them that they're indoctrinating people with religious faith. But the religion isn't currently whatever the church were prom promoting it, based on their tran translations of Bible texts. Their translations being the operative words. But based on what the current, whatever power that should not be you want to describe, government, NASA, whoever, tells you the world is. Well, that's their faith, that's their religion, and it's the religion of the Western world because they say that's what the world is. That's the philosophy that we're going to adhere to from now on. This is the world, okay? We've all looked into it, we've all figured it out, and you just need to accept it. Yeah, but they didn't figure it out. They figured out a fantasy. I bet if, if better most of the people come to realize that, hey, wait a second, this is not scientific fact, uh, they will be a little curious. I that's why my we're here on this show, and uh -uh. that's why we. I choose my words. Friends. I choose my words carefully. Figured it out. Um, I got a question about authority and perceived authority. Okay. If uh, if say say if a baller challenges you to take a physics test, right? And you agree, are you lending credence to them being uh, authority in physics? No. You could challenge me to take a test on a particular philosophy, and all you'd be testing is my understanding of the philosophy as opposed to whether or not the philosophy was capable of reification. 
Yeah, but if they're the ones judging whether you pass or fail, aren't, aren't they taking a perceived authority in that sense? Well, pass or fail based on the parameters and the testing structure. So if within the parameters of the test, it says that we're going to be testing this person on their understanding of Newton's physics. Now, your challenge to that and your answer won't get you a mark because there's a set right answer. So, yes, it's based on their rules. What's your point? John? I think oh, it's... Go on. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say Conspiracy Cats is uh, he's trying to challenge uh, Brian and Flatsoid to take one of his physics tests. Oh, so as opposed to actually proving all these ridiculous claims, him and his ridiculous model make, like gas pressure without a container, uh, without the container, there can be no pressure. He wants to give people tests. Yeah, that's funny. What, what does he think? He's still in school trying to teach people, trying to teach little kids? <laughs> What's wrong with this guy? <laughs> Couldn't be any Go more condescending, test, really. Bro. Conspiracy moron? Like, are you feeling all right, bro? <laughs> what the Is hell? he appealing to academia? Well, you just quit, need to quote him. Without the container, there can be no pressure. End quote, conspiracy cats. Or, without the balloon, there is no pressure. End quote, conspiracy cats. So this guy, at a fundamental level, understands that space is fake. It stands in violation of natural law. And he can understand and detail that for an audience. What's he going to do when we point out that that's correct? Without the container, there can be no pressure. Well, take my physics test. I'm wonderful. What is that going to prove, though? That, I'm trying to figure out what is that going to prove. Uh, it's not hopefully... trying to prove anything. What he's doing is deflecting from the real issue and trying to get Brian and Flatsoid on something else. The glorified ad hominem yeah. attack. Let's test your knowledge personally on these given limited subjects. Okay. What are they debating about? Is it about their personal knowledge of your physics test? Or are we debating about the nature of reality and the fact that the sky vacuum's not real? And by your own words of admission, without the container, there can be no pressure. So space is fake. It stands directly in violation of natural law. What's that you say? Take a physics test. Well, will the physics test ever change that natural law that pisses in the face of the sky vacuum? No, it won't. That's what I was going to say. Why don't they just say, well, demonstrate gas pressure without a container? That's the only test we want to see. Hasn't he said that he was going to do that at one time on some show, but he had never done it? No, that must be someone that, else. Yeah, because no, He was going to do that, but he required two containers. <laughs> of course he did. The average standard globe who claims you can have gas pressure without a container requires two containers to demonstrate it. Unbelievable. Well, exactly. then they got, a, they, they got a point if they're going to look at it that way. No, you're wrong. It takes two containers. <laughs> yeah, so without the container or containers, there can be no pressure. That will never be violated. That will never be demonstrated because you require containment to have gas pressure. It needs something to press upon. And we're breathing gas pressure. So there must be containment because, quote, without the container, there can be no pressure, end quote, conspiracy cats. Yeah, you're going to frustrate them with that, and they're going to say, then show me the dome. Show me the uh, dome. Uh, 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 at that point, I'm glad you brought that up. So, another way of staying in the denial stage. So, rather than addressing the fact that we would require containment to be alive, and we are alive, so antecedent-consequent relationship logic implies there must be containment. Do I know what the containment is? No. No, I don't. And why don't I? Well, because there's a massive deception about the sky being a vacuum. So are they researching what's containing the gas? No, they're telling us that there isn't one. So shock horror, me the mere mortal does not know what the sky is. But the person who said, well, what's the dome made of? Has sidestepped having to contemplate and process the fact that without the container, there can be no pressure and we are breathing it. So they're, sir, by way of attack, what must the containment that we must have be? Because they won't phrase it in that way, but that's what they're asking. 
So immediately when someone asks me that, so glad that you now accept that we must be in a contained system in order to be breathing. I don't know what the sky is. But you've got questions. Me too. I could ask you the same. So what's the sky made of then? Because I don't know and you don't know. So we're all in the same happy boat now, realising that we must have containment and we're told the sky is a vacuum. We've been deceived. So that's just, just another way that the, the rhetoric has changed, right? Because back in the day, they used to tell us we don't need a container at all, right? That we, we don't require a container for gas pressure. Now and they say... Slowly, eventually, it became, oh, gravity is the container, right? Or weight is the container, or whatever other nonsense is the container, or the universe is the container, right? <laughs> We've heard all these variations of this nonsense... But back in the day, it was we didn't need one at all. So seems like they're trying to catch up. They just don't know how. But they forgot one thing, that Einstein, uh, 106 years ago, and Mooser today, gravity is not a force. So it can't be gravity, because we have to accept Einstein's 4D world. It's an effect. So now that's out the window. And they still haven't answered it. But they know you can't have air pressure without it. What? Why would you need a they force need... to contain the gas on a ball? You wouldn't. You'd need containment. That would be a container. Right. Right. So you just need some space-time bending in a certain setup, and then prevent, yeah, the escape of gas by limiting the amount of space-time it can pass through. Can you show me space-time bending, Arwen? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Sorry, How does that I, work? I, did, I didn't do the theme music. <laughs> Hey Nathan Oakley, uh, well, I can, can I ask you a question? For you. Hold on, Alvin. Go on, Don. Uh, I want to pick at your brain and see if I make any sense to you. Uh, I think gravity is observation hijacking. May I explain? Observation hijacking. Mm, I don't know what you were observing, but go ahead. Well, I'm observing is, you know how they describe that gravity is center of mass, right? So that's why everything sticks to the so-called sphere. Right? So why do you not weigh heavier on the sea level than you do, like, say, a mountain? Yeah, but they said that this is the case. Have you not, have you not heard of the Atvos effect? If not, go and look uh -uh. it up no. so you can. I don't want to go through the Atvos effect, but feel free to just Google it and research what they claim in this regard well, in terms of things changing their weight. Again, just so once you research it, you know why this is not a valid claim. They're inventing the phenomena within the mathematics. Uh, as always, it's of course. It's mostly just temperature differential and pressure differential that causes the weight to maybe, be different. Maybe, but we've got a very non-natural phenomena being studied and being qualified in maths. And no, it's definitely not science. So it's invented within mathematics and asserted as being real. Several people have had, including Sleeping Warrior and Betty Van Valsen, have had globers over a barrel on their mathematical reification in this regard. But yeah, they do actually make a claim in that regard. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Any Globa here want to argue for up Evos? Or, or a curve or something? Or, or anything heliocentric religion related? Knowing full right, well right. that it's anything. not true and we can debunk it. <laughs> like anything, chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Mebby Styles. Hopefully I've said your name correctly. Thank you very much indeed for the super chat. Really appreciate the support. Catch that. I said if they argue for this, it'll be the peak of their argument for gravity. The peak. <laughs> Well, I had one for you when you brought up the Beatles. Here comes the sun. You got to go through the whole Beatles song list. They also said here, there, everywhere. What, the sun? I know. It's they, all, 
Hold on. They also say I look at the world and I notice it's turning while my guitar gently weeps. I don't notice no turning. Yeah, but they also say it's a day tripper. Would you like to hear what uh, Blue Marble Science had to say about containment being required? When you when you see the citation is talking about the walls of a container, they're generally talking in, in, in common sense terms about a defined system that's going to obey the gas laws. And to do that, you have to have a, a hard container, sealed container. If you want any of the gas laws to work, that volume is required. To do that, you have to have a, a hard container, sealed container. If you want any of the gas laws to work, that volume is required. And <laughs> uh, perfect, but he's going to say it doesn't apply to the earth. Welcome to flat earth, then? Y- yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, he's going he's to say it doesn't apply to space, I'm telling you. Yeah, that's fine, that's because fine. space isn't real. So what, it doesn't apply to your mathematical reification of this philosophy? Yeah, yeah, we know. Yeah, your model violates natural law. What's natural law? Things that occur always in nature. But what, they are, can't be applied to your model? That's because we don't live on your model. Well, then you said, bring you it said up the any of the reading. gas laws, if you are t- any of the gas laws, you need a hard sealed container. Wow. Okay, buddy. Thanks. Yeah, you can't have gas pressure without a container. It's a necessary antecedent. In case well, you were unaware, obviously he, he's already provided the cowbell because he provided a video with two containers providing gas pressure. So, way to go, Blue Marble. Of course, his video was titled "Gas Pressure Without a Container," and now he's overtly stating that you require containment, even though he's claiming the complete opposite in a video that's still out there titled and good enough in terms of its catchment to get a PhD to stand behind it. Amazingly, his two-container demonstration of gas pressure without a container, with two containers. Maybe they should just start redefining what it is to mean, uh, what it is to be a container. If they just do that, that'll kind of fix the problem. No, what they do is they redefine what is required to contain gas within their fundamentalist zealotry reification of a model that we don't live on. In other words, they say the natural laws that we experience always don't apply to their model that we don't live on. Well, so, unfortunately, no, this clown is no also, a he's already okay. tried that, Arwen. He's already tried yeah. that. This is the same guy who who was asked for... Uh, what, does he, what did he say? He said... Give me a citation that says a open pipe is a container. He needed a citation for that. Well, it can contain something. So I think that's a vile request. <laughs> Listen, pipe down with that, okay? Well, it's in his statement right at the beginning. Any of the gas laws. So he's basically admitting there are gas laws. And what are the gas laws? <laughs> well, any Globers in Discord agree or disagree with uh, Hillbilly Blue Balls? Any Globers at all in Discord? Well, I did hear them yesterday while they were trying to figure that out, that, you know, you can define things however you want, whenever you want to define things. So basically, the Earth can be simultaneous, sim- sim- I can't even say the word, uh, an open system, a closed system, or even an isolated system. Depends on how you want to define it and what parameters you want to put on it. So it really can go with whatever they want, whenever they want it. Yeah, in terms of what they're calling the Earth, they're describing their model. So, yeah, it depends how we define the terms within our reification of the model. But that doesn't mean that because they can define things about their model differently one day and then differently the other yeah that's a necessity when it doesn't match with reality though but again i highlight that's just them describing how their model works so when for instance rumpus says the second law of thermodynamics that's a natural law something that applies always doesn't apply to the earth he's actually saying this law of nature something that applies always cannot be applied to my philosophy that i have reified into existence known as globe earth model it doesn't apply to that 
few shout outs that flat fellow has sent two smiley face sunglasses stickers thank you very much indeed for the super chats also billy wasser has joined as a penguin thank you very much for joining billy forward to seeing your chats in members only so that's where we're at is it we have demolished the assertion that we've got a physical sphere beneath our feet that we've got a sky vacuum above our head or that the ground beneath our feet is actually moving in any way shape or form and the response we get from some of the higher echelons shall we say of the globe rhetoric trenches is to ask us to take physics tests that's their response yeah it would it would seem that way or they'll label you dangerous oh well, yeah We're dangerous because we don't think questions. the floor is a ball that's going somewhere. That's that's adorable. Maybe you, you sound dangerous if you think the floor is a ball that's going somewhere. I'd have to stay away from you. What what the FED show, if I may, just from Nathan's last summary, the FED show has done is shown that every time they argue, they argue in defense of a model, and when you ask the right question about their model and compared to natural law, their model dies. This is where they are, no win situation. Yeah, and the lower level fundies that don't really understand what happens here will insist that you present them with a model to rebut their model. Not only will they insist that you reify their model, but they'll insist that you hold up a false dichotomy to challenge their model just goes beyond belief try and highlight that to somebody who's a really newcomer to this argument or this debate and say well that's a reification fallacy half the time they don't even know what you mean then that's a false dichotomy and again they don't know what you mean where's your model i'm not going to debate you unless you've got a model all right so unless i reify models into existence a fallacy you won't debate with me unless i will be as fallacious as you <laughs> okay Get lost. Start off and reify your model, your philosophy into existence. But because I won't do the same, you don't think it's worthy to talk to me? I agree. Yeah, you're not worthy of my time because I won't reify a model next to yours so you can argue the toss between the two in false dichotomy. Yeah, look it up. Reification. That's they don't the even key have word, a reification of a about? model because you could go buy a small replica of a Ferrari in a hobby store, and it's to scale to something that's real, like a real Ferrari. So there's a model of a real Ferrari, but in a smaller scale. That's not reification because it's there. Theirs is a reification. They can't provide uh, their model in reality. Go on, Don. I, I don't think a lot of people understand why models are fallacious. Um, you know, like you're not going to recreate ra reality in a jar. You know what I mean? Uh, I think people believe that you can, though. Like when they say, you know, this is my model, they'll never present to you the heliocentric model. They may give you some formulas or you know, you'll never see a physical model. It just won't happen. And even if they could, if they presented a working sphere in a vacuum with vegetation growing on it and gas adhering to the sides of the ball and not dispersing into the vacuum, let's just say they achieved that. Would that mean that that was where you were standing as you stared at it? Uh, unless I could drive my car on it, then it means nothing. Uh, absolutely not. We're talking about something that's tiny in, you know, even the biggest of vacuum chambers capable of creation on Earth. Let's say they could put a, a rock in it get it to suspend in the middle of the vacuum chamber and have gas stuck to the side of it, not filling the vacuum, because that's going to happen. Let's say they did that. Well, would that mean that as you look in through the glass window, that you're stood on that representation of what they say the world is? Never possible to achieve inside it, but hypothetically, if they could, it wouldn't make that the world. We're not standing on a model. We don't live on a model. It's the fallacy of misplaced concreteness. Making that which is not real, that would be the model inside a vacuum chamber, the world that you're actually standing on. 
the map is not the terrain. Because there's a philosophy that says we're stood on a sphere does not make it so. It's merely a philosophy. So to reify it is to make it into something that you're actually standing on. Well, I look at the horizon and assume that it's a physical sphere edge blocking things in the distance. Therefore, I'm stood on a sphere. Here's the mass to go along with it. Making it ever more real. No, you're not living on a model. And what is the world we're debating about? Well, it's the heliocentric model. Well, that's the fear. That's the fear every baller has because they hear what they're saying. They see it that, uh, that their model doesn't make sense and they're faced with this in their thought. Oh my gosh, I have been fooled. How I, impo how, uh, no, I can't, I can't go there. And so they fight it. Yeah. Like I said earlier, when somebody goes, well, what's the dome made of? Because they've appreciated that you can't have gas pressure without a container. It's their way of sidestepping the awful reality that the sky is not a vacuum, that space is fake, by saying, unless you can provide an alternative, and what would happen if you did? Well, the dome's made of sapphire. All right, well, let's pull apart why it's not made of sapphire. And once I do, making you wrong, my sky vacuum will exist again. No, it won't. Beyond the point of you demolishing the argument that's claimed to be real about the sky, which is that it's a vast space for gas to fill and gas isn't filling it in violation of natural law and people visit this place and then send pictures back to a claim to be sphere earth of men on high wire. Well, that wouldn't make your religion true if you debunk the fact that I don't know what the sky is made of when there's a massive deception about what it actually is. Shock horror, people are being deceived left and right about what it is, so therefore they don't know what it actually is. But does that mean you disproving of it being a sky vacuum suddenly isn't real? No, but you can easily sidestep it by asking your opponent what it really is then. Not acknowledging the fact that, yeah, you'd need containment to have gas pressure like we're breathing. Yeah, there are many falsification is independent of replacement. We don't need to give you another cool story to replace the cool story that we just destroyed. That's a negative. Most people don't realize that. Unless you've got an alternative, I will not accept anything beyond what I currently understand. Because that's been accepted by the consensus, and therefore that's reality. Now, if you challenge it and demonstrate how it's incorrect, unless you have an alternative, just so story or otherwise that I can present and won't be laughed at, I'm not going to accept that my current understanding is wrong, even though it's been demonstrated to be wrong. That's where they're at. Well, yeah. we're going to learn today. <laughs> the worst one is the black swan in terms of the hand waves that you get. Because their initial hand wave back in 2020, Jan and Feb, was refraction and now we laugh at that and say great well as soon as we hear it welcome to flat earth is going to be the response you get so no physical geometric sphere horizon to derive an r value from so you can't measure geometry so it's not geometric so it's not what your maths is claiming it's not this horizon marked with an x labeled as horizon the horizon's not earth curve what next nobody claims it's earth curve yeah welcome to flat earth is what you, they'll get when they say refraction so what do we get now well we get i don't accept it i don't accept the black swan i couldn't give a crap there was an interchange of belief, you fundy. We're here to demonstrate to an audience what is and is not capable in terms of geometry with your sphere belief. Now, we've demonstrated that it's not capable of being a physical geometric sphere edge blocking boats and buildings. It's not what the horizon we present have. That's not what it is. Well, you don't have to accept that. Like, we care! Do you think I get paid by, by referrals or by conversions? No. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> you know, go in peace, my friend. You don't accept that we haven't got a physical sphere edge. You want to look at this picture and go, oh, that's, a, that's an earth curve right there. That's what's blocking the bottom of the sun. Earth curve. No, it isn't. It's a not actual position. It's a not actual location. It's apparent. By definition, it's not earth curve. And it's beyond the physical capabilities of an earth curve edge if it was geometric. It isn't. We're told all the time how non-geometric it is by your own side here in trench level. So beyond that, being told how non-physical it is by the opponents, which is pretty devastating every single time it happens, and amusing, I might add. What else have they got? Well, they've got a hand wave, or concede that the horizon's not Earth curve. Those are the two options. That's what they're left with. 
No, it's, that's beautiful. I forget beautiful. the third, they, they, the, the cute times that they've tried to call it a, a straw man. Like, the geometric horizon is a straw man, or Albert Rooney's a straw man, or the entire Black Swan argument's a straw man. <laughs> Can't forget those. Well, they're akin to saying, with reference to Earth rotation, that you and your reference frames are ruined. Saying the black swan is a straw man. Well, the black swan, modus tollen, starts with the presupposition we're on a sphere because you fundies wouldn't give it up when he pointed out that it was a presupposition. So the fact that you wouldn't give it up meant we had to beg the question with you and say, if Earth's a sphere with the radius as it's claimed then it would have these geometric limitations, physical limitations. And coincidentally, they're the same limitations laid down in your sphere maths. So it's very much saying your claim that Earth's a sphere. We just then demonstrate beyond all certitude that it could be any way physical. That's the horizon. It isn't. So telling us that the black swan's a straw man, Al Biruni's a straw man, those are your arguments, like saying... You and your reference frames are ruined. Those are your arguments. We don't need reference frames. We don't need physical exactly. horizons. We don't need Al Biruni measuring R with a horizon that he claims is physical. We don't need the horizon to block boats and buildings so we can argue with you about how much or little you claim the physical horizons block the boat or building in the distance. We don't need any of those things. Those are your claims. So telling us it's a straw man is even better than telling us it's refraction. Oh, what? Non-geometric refraction then. Wonderful. Welcome to Flat Earth. Straw man, you say what? The claim that Earth's a sphere, horizon, physical, geometric values. That's a straw man. Oh, wonderful. Welcome to Flat Earth. It's like, it's like they've been begging the question all this time, right? Presupposing that we have a radius of 3959. And then once we put that into an argument form, they're like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You guys can't be begging the question. <laughs> You're begging the wrong question, guys. <laughs> None of us are saying this. Yeah, none of us are saying this. You're begging the wrong question. Well, what question are we begging? Because the modus tollens logical consistency starts with your assertion that we're on a sphere with a radius value. The thing that when we pointed out that that's a begging the question fallacy, you told us, well, we already know we're on a sphere. Okay, so if we already know we're on a sphere, then we'll have sphere limitations and we don't. Well, that's a straw man. What, your whole argument and religion? Yeah, we know. Welcome to Flat Earth. Well, how dare you point out the limitations that we don't have in a model that claims the limitations that we don't have? How dare you? You haven't got the imagination for it, Chocolate. What's your problem? To be on a sphere, you need a high degree of imagination. You need three-dimensional worlds that can't be measured correctly with orbits. And you need 4D worlds that you don't live in to give you the maths to reify into physical existence when there aren't forces to hold gas pressure here because you need containment. You need the imagination, Chocolate. Other than that, all you need is theme music. Yeah, what we really need is uh, exactly a lot of indoctrination, a lot of fantasy that requires the suspension of disbelief for a sphere world and sky vacuum not being at the surface level. A sub-level narrative, call it subliminal if you like. But that narrative throughout the fiction of Star Wars is mirrored in the non-fiction lies that they bring you from a second law of thermodynamics violation sky vacuum known as outer space. Because if the sky was a vacuum, then the gas we breathe would fill the space. Gas fills the space it has to fill. And to laugh at you, they call space a space, space. <laughs> well, why? Well, just to <laughs> laugh at you. This is when you start with begging the question. This is the sequence of death that every big in the question is going to go. So we we do the what you call logical consistency of the modus tollens. So we give it to them, and it has to be a physical location. Then they say, "Oops, uh, that didn't look good." So let's say refraction. Can't see it. Uh, well, then you can't ever measure it. Oops. Uh, okay. Well, the horizon is not the Earth curve. Whoever said that? And then now it's okay. I don't accept the black swan. I don't care, though. Their acceptance at the end of the argument is irrelevant. Like I said in the pre-show or at the beginning of the live show, when they reach the point of debate, that's where we get to. And they've got a steep wall to climb hereafter. But that's a personal struggle, right? That's nothing to do with me. Them climbing over that wall and reaching depression, because it's a long fall back down again, 
<laughs> well, we don't get to see that. But that's their personal struggle that I couldn't give a toss about. Yeah, do you, I mean, what, what level of depression do you have to reach when the very thing that's been for years and years touted as blocking boats and buildings in the distance and the horizon, now all of a sudden we don't see it, we can't, don't expect to see it, we've never seen it, being that we have an atmosphere and, like... That that's got to be some level of depression, man. That's that's hard. It's tough. But but it's the anatomy of what happens to anything that's begging the question when someone starts to ask a question and it tears itself apart from within because it's not reality. Unless the entire Western world is indoctrinated with that fundamentalist belief, because then they'll defend it in the face of you pointing out that it's a fallacy to assume your outcome. To put it another way, they'll cry, we already know it's a sphere. In other words, my justification for point, you pointing out that I beg the question and assume my outcome in my statement that if Earth's a sphere, then we'll have votes blocked by this amount, and here's the maths to prove it, pointing out that that's a logical fallacy wasn't enough. They cried, we already know. Hence, we end up, by being forced to beg the question on their behalf, Modus Tollens debunking their claim that we're on a physical sphere. We're not. It's been debunked. There's no going back from the black swan. And again, I'll highlight, if you see that as a massive wall to climb and just go hand wave, I'm staying right where I am, and I'll argue all day long in the chat comments of debating channels that are unlike mine and say, Sodger, if you don't want to come on the show, you're not going to get to chat here. Yeah, well, if you want to spend your entire time just arguing with Flat Earthers, challenging them to prove what the sky is, for example, then more power to you. You know, live in that cognitive pain as long as you like. Me, I've climbed the wall, had a long fall, shook it off, and then moved on. And life is better for it. Now, the fact that you're still on the side of depression, denial, anger, and bargaining doesn't bother me in the slightest. That's your problem fundies we're talking about here globe believers that have come here and been force fed the red pill and really don't like the bitter taste it's left in their mouth so they argue with us all day long well they, it's just a proof of circular reasoning because uh when they have the bag in the question and we go through and destroy it then they say well you know what i'm just gonna go back to my initial uh belief i'm the big the question of the sphere again because i can't overcome your arguments I'm going to hand... get rid of the pain, I guess. Yeah, give it a hand wave. Hey, Adam. Very good to have you. Afternoon, guys. Hey, Adam. How's it going? Nice weekend, I hope. <sighs> no. My lad gave me food. But I'm fairly sorry for myself, Nave. Uh, something dodgy my lad gave me. So, oh, dear. Uh, that sounds I'm pretty serious. Alone. Is it something we're aware of already? By you mocking ballers, you lot. Is this something we're aware of? <laughs> you up, Rolf? Is this something we're aware of? Something personal that we shouldn't be discussing? No, 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 no. No, you just gave me the shits. That's all. I'm feeling a bit poorly. Um, um, I see. I shouldn't have asked you to elaborate. Thank you. No, I didn't. I didn't. I shouldn't have mentioned it. I don't know why. It's because I'm a whinging bloke, probably. Um, but you did nearly die, let's be honest. It was close, Nate. It was bloody close. I've been there, man. I've been there. Yeah. Women don't yeah. understand these things. I don't think I don't think they've ever been that close. I don't think they're physically capable of getting that close to death and coming back so miraculously quick. That's correct. I've seen the light also. <laughs> anyway, that was rather disgusting, but segued yeah, beautifully by me. <laughs> so <laughs> where were we? I've completely forgotten. Somebody help me out. Working at the uh... reification of the globe model. Of course, that's what this all boils down to. And it always makes me hark back to, you know, people being under the rule or the teachings of the church. And that was whatever the current rhetoric of the time was. And now we look back on it and just go, oh, well, that was just them with a religious belief. Well, I'm sure the people at the time, in the same way as the people here now, don't realise that they're under a religious doctrine or a reified philosophy, or however you want to describe it, they may not be aware of it, and they wouldn't have been aware of it back then. So the fact that people mandatorily or 
otherwise reify their mathematical philosophy that they're unaware of into existence is something that we're going to have to deal with, you know, and I, I, I say we don't care about the trench level people. Overall, we wouldn't be here if we didn't concern ourselves with the fact that for a start, my kids will have to at least at a, some level understand this for them to function socially. Why should they? Why do they need to know this philosophy any more than any other philosophy that we don't, you know, adhere to? Do I need to teach them about simulation theory philosophy because it's another alternative way of understanding or believing the world works? Do I need to educate my daughters in that those sorts of nonsenses? No, I don't need to. Well, why? Well, it's got just as much validity of, of claiming heliocentrism. Billy Waza says, stay safe <laughs> and keep it flat. Indeed. Have you, have you, uh, I didn't know if then that amount, Nathan, was a Orwellian. Oh, I didn't notice that. He sent 19 pounds and 84 pence. Yes, indeed. Wasn't the new Wonder Woman called 1984? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, I saw an advert for Wonder Woman yes, 1984. Yep. Wonder Woman 84, yep. Well, I've got to watch that now. I'm sure it's god awful, but there's got to be a reason for why it's called 1984. At the very least, I'd like to know why. But thank you for well, the 19 well, pounds and 84 it, pence, it Billy. Was it? It's set in 1984. Yeah. Yes. Okay. There's still got to be more. Journey through time, in it. So it's the 70s series. What she's doing in spandex. So. I see. Well, I suppose of they... all the dates to pick. Yeah, well, there's got to be more to it than that. Shout out to Retro Bill. I've been trying to brainwash myself back into believing, back, to, back into being a globe believer, but it isn't taking any suggestions, Nathan and panel. Um, no. <laughs> it's a bit like being unplugged from the Matrix, right? If you understand at a basic level you can't reify the horizon into a physical geometric sphere edge for example how are you gonna not know that how are you gonna undo that you can't just wake up one day and go you know what maybe it is a sphere edge <laughs> what are you gonna start telling yourself because all you'll have to process is the same thing the people who come here process it with well the globe was bigger one day well we don't have a sphere edge but it is a sphere edge but we don't have a, you know they have a little um What's the word Arwen uses? Um, paradoxical Paradox. meltdown. <laughs> paradoxical meltdown. It is a sphere edge. It isn't a sphere edge. It's like a, a computing process that doesn't quite function and goes around in circles, so the computer crashes. <laughs> it is a sphere edge. It isn't a sphere edge. We do, we do, we don't, we don't. We do, we do. <laughs> System error. <laughs> I, I'll tell you why. I'll, I'll tell you with an analogy of math. If uh, 2 plus 2 is 4 and... Everyone is saying two plus two is five, but you know it's four. How, how can you ever go back? Well, because we have had a suggestion. Can't. Well, no, there is a suggestion that's valid from Billy Wazza. Excellent yeah. new member. He says a lobotomy. That'll work. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'm that's kind of a less less surgical way. Maybe if you get on eBay and pick up a second hand neuralizer from Men in Black, just to just wipe your whole mind of all the black one and everything. Yeah, the neuralizer doesn't exist beyond the fiction, f yeah, fictional, heliocentric orientated movie series called Men in Black, though, eh? I think this might open up a whole new field of work for a psychiatrist because there'll be so many people going in for that. Maybe this is a good field for uh, someone to make money in. You're right. What Adams just said reminds me of a section in Red Dwarf where the crew of Starbug are under attack. And the cat says, I know what we should do. We should strap on the rocket pants and junior Birdman our, well, our way uh, hell out of here. And uh, Crichton, the robot, says, well, that's an excellent plan other than rocket pants don't exist beyond the fictional series Robbery Rocket Pants. But other than that, it's a great plan. <laughs> that's a good one, too. Yeah, there's something about truth. Once you know it, uh, your mind is going to be with your conscience bothering you if you try to deny it. What exactly? Oh, man. Too, too many people are like Cypher, and they enjoy the taste of that steak, even though they know damn well it's not real. That's correct. 
Yeah, that's true. But as you say, you can't unsee this stuff. You know, you've you've climbed over the metaphorical hill in this show's example, and you've got over the other side, and it's been a bump when you got there. Now, after the bump, you know, you look back up at the wall and go, bloody hell, that was a big wall. But then the bruises heal. Now, you unfortunately can't climb back over the wall because the motivation's not there to do so. You know, and in trying to climb back up the wall in metaphor it's covered in grease on the other side so once you've slipped down the other side you can't climb back over because all you're doing is causing yourself more mental anguish to try and indoctrinate yourself or go along with indoctrination that's no longer working it doesn't function anymore so it's just not possible to climb back over the wall as far as i'm concerned and the people who come here in my opinion some of them have actually climbed over that wall you know and they're in depression but they really want to go back to the bargaining stage. They can't bear the idea of realising the obvious and observable nature of the world. That is that it's flat, the sky is in a vacuum and we're not moving. And they don't want to. So they're desperately scrambling back at the wall, trying to get back over. And those are the people that have been nudged up the wall <laughs> and then nudged over it while they've got into debate and discussion. Not realising that debate and discussion also leaves you with a bit of realisation at the end of it. And without even realising it, you've been... Hoist on the shoulders of flat earth until you've been bumped over the massive wall without you wanting to be. And then you go, oh, God, get him, get him back over. We do have a geometric horizon. We don't. We don't. <laughs> well, well, we know what happened to Cypher when he went for that stake. He got T-boned at the end. Boom, I was, boom. I was thinking about that same thing there, Temp, um, Cypher. And even in the film where he's asking to be put back and, you know, so it'll all go away, all the pain. You, you kind of see it, and you know that even when he's put back, his memory's still there. He can't get rid of the knowledge of what he's already known. The only way is, as Billy Waz says, is a lobotomy, is to actually wipe your mind of, of the cognition you've gained. And it's kind of sad, really, isn't it, that to stay in that world where you think you know something you're happy to uh, actually try and remove that cognition from yourself um so. so you're saying when the ballers come here and their model doesn't hold up and they realize it's a fantasy it's not real they would rather have their mind wiped clean of everything rather than face the truth yeah, the people on the other side of the wall, absolutely. They're in the same boat as Cypher. They've been, as I described, force-fed the red pill. And they can't believe it. And they're trying to desperately get back over the wall. With that, I'll say, if you are watching this on either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley Premiering Streams, then stay tuned, as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you are watching this live, this is where we bid you farewell. A huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who smashed the super chat, liked, commented, shared, subscribed, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. Once again, stay tuned if you're watching on either Premiering Stream. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Something. Well, notice, oh, when, uh, notice when Neil uh, references Bell, he calls him a meatball when he's really a ding dong. <laughs> well, he's whispering sweet nothings in my ear. He's he's down like sending me paragraphs upon paragraphs of questions that he thinks I need to answer. Listen, that guy is in charge of moving satellites to their final position. Respect that man. Well, I tried to I tried to help him and say, you know, calculating something and measuring something ain't ain't the same thing. You know that, right? Math is reality. Yeah, yeah you don't have Back to that man. He moves satellites.
Don't you understand? Don't you understand? A, a, lot of them, position. A, a lot of them don't know that, though. A lot of them think you say calculating and measuring, and it's like the same thing. <laughs> it's like they don't understand when you ask, do you have a measurement of the curve of the Earth? And they say, oh, yeah, it's been calculated by this and that and the third. It's like, oh, hello, hello. I said measurement, not calculation. Two different words, guy. Uh, John, I encountered this uh, when people started dialoguing with me in chat and all that. And they would write these long things. And I was like, gosh, it's so simple. And so what they do is they can't beat the simple argument you just destroyed. So they get you wanting to talk about this. Then they paste some big thing from an article. And it went on for, like, for a long time. I said, you know what? I'm not going to respond to these people anymore. I don't have the time. And they're not addressing the initial argument they lost. They're just trying to get me wound up in something else. So this is their only way to uh, divert the pain, is to get you talking about other things. Yeah, I guess so. But, you know, I, I never really wanted to, like, I, I don't want to debate anybody about it. I'm, I'm not interested in that. I don't mind, you know, listening to the debates, but I don't know why they feel like they need to talk to me. No, it's for them. It's not for you. They need that to ease their conscience. That's what I figured out. Because the more I went back with them initially, I'm thinking, oh, they're interested. They weren't interested. Because you're a prime supply of pain relief. Because if they can convince you that you are mistaken, because they know you're mistaken, then that will alleviate their pain when you say, I was wrong. They want you to say it or, because they, they can never admit they're or, wrong, but they'd love to hear you say it because that would affirm their position. That would be confirmation bias and a very strong source of it you would be. And the closest they can get to convincing you without actually convincing you is convincing themselves that they've convinced you. And they can do that very easily. The, the level of delusion with this is, is incredible. Yeah, and usually at the end of their comments, they'll say, blah, 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 go. Like, like it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you're too afraid to answer me back. I left three of the same. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I wouldn't mind talking to people about it. Like, that's that's fine. But then it, it's like anger gets involved all of a sudden. And I, I just I don't want to deal with that. I don't. I don't like it. I just, you know, you go do whatever you want to do. I, I'm not interested in talking to you anymore. Yeah, it'll turn into anger and personal attacks because they can't attack the argument. So their anger will definitely manifest itself in terms of their anger towards you personally. Hey, everybody. Hey, Nathan. Hey, Brian. Good weekend. What's up, bro? Hi, Nathan. Good, good, week, good weekend. Yes, did actually, did. Just listening to your conversation there, um, and I hope you did too. I hope you did too. Sorry. Um, just listening to your conversation there. They need to. Um, they need to make themselves believe that you're a lawyer, or you're stupid, because it can never be that they're wrong. So it has to be one or the other, because there is no third option for them. Well, I mean, they can believe that without talking to me, though. You know what I mean? Like, I'm fine with them believing whatever they want to about me. But I, why, why bother talking yeah. to me? Though? Yeah, that shows you how much that it does mean to them, that it means to them, as opposed to them. Well, I'm sure they tell you, oh, this doesn't mean shit. This is this is a nonsensical topic, right? But look how focused they are in trying to convince you and whatever they're trying to convince you of, right? Right. How much time they spend arguing back and forth with you when they right, can just right. go somewhere and watch star wars well, yeah, it's, it's actually also, chocolate it's, it's uh, also your story john because I, you were one of them arguing and now you're on this side arguing against them and that puts them in a funny position as uh brian is saying they can't admit they're wrong they never will but here's a baller who became a flat earther and this is bothering me so i'm gonna go and do this to him just to carry on from what chocolate's just said that's that's right chocolate yes sorry tenth because that works to our advantage. So on this side of the fence, 
generally speaking, with a bit less anonymity, people using their real names and titles and such. But the people on this side of the fence don't really care that much about the opponents and them personally. Now, the opponents, on the other hand, are almost obsessively concerned about us personally, to the point where it's getting creepy now. Now, we've just sort of been almost indoctrinated into an understanding that we're going to get personally ridiculed by these people for our flat earth belief but that doesn't change that in terms of the public's perception of what's going on here their overriding sense of normalcy or decency will prevail when they hear those things and they're pointed out and what i mean by that is if it's contextualized again this is for the audience as it being directed towards our argument being wrong and you saying well we must be liars or stupid then it isn't necessarily immediately processed that what the person's doing is losing in an argument or a debate and then immediately personally attacking the opponent to the point where they not only personally attack them they know all sorts of personal information about them too which they hold against them having studied them for a long period of time now when that gets highlighted to the audience you go whoa yeah that is actually very creepy so the person on the losing side of the argument is now demonstrating just how personally obsessed they are with their opponent in the face of losing. Mmm, a few eyebrows get raised when it gets pointed out in that way, right? Yep, and that's why I point it out. I go very, uh, I enjoy pointing out to them, especially the ones that get all triggered and bothered. Well, why, why are you so triggered and bothered by this? I thought this was silly. I thought this was stupid. What's wrong with you? Especially when you got the people in your face and you're doing it and you can see it in their face and their eyes how upset they are because of this particular topic. And you just say, well, what's wrong? All I've done is ask you a question. Like, where'd you get your radius from? Where's the measurement of the curve of the earth? Why are you so nervous? I don't understand. And yeah. that little attitude that you give up drives them insane. And I love it. Yeah, and an example of that would be conspiracy cats saying, take a physics test because then I can show an audience that you're cognitively inferior therefore making my argument correct because i'm intellectually superior to these mere flat earthers that i'm testing yeah how can you have gas pressure without a container given that you believe the sky is a vacuum that's got sod all to do with our personal intelligence level merely an assessment of your failings when you reify a model could I say something about that little test that Conspiracy Cat has, Cat has asked me a flat side to take, if you don't well, mind? Sure, as long as you don't ask me anything about it, because I don't know anything about it beyond what I've been told on this show, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, well, just i lay it out for the audience, for those that don't know. Uh, conspiracy Cats has asked me and flat side to take an A-levels, I don't know what that is, that's something in, in Britain, an A-levels physics test. And if we, if we get uh, 60 or above, which is a pass, then he will delete his channels off of YouTube. And Fight the Flat Earth has also said he will delete his channels, his channel or channels, I don't know if he has one or two, off of YouTube. So basically the team will disappear off of YouTube if me and Flat Side get over 60%. Now, I initially said that I wouldn't do it because it's a kind of very condescending and personal attack on me and my education level and my intellect. It is a known fact, but anyone has listened to anything from me that I have said many times on the internet that I don't have an education uh, other than like I left school just before the age of 15. And technically I left school the day I walked in there because I, I, I never I never suited me. I hated every minute of it. But he's attacking this. He knows this and he's attacking this. That's why he didn't ask, let's say, Adam Meekin to do it. Sorry, Adam, I know you're there. Do you know what I mean? Because he knows Adam Meekin is a chemist. So he's not asking him that. He's asking me and he's asking, asking Flatside. Flatside, I don't know what Flatside's edu education is, but Flatside works as a, as a sprayer and stuff like that. So he works a physical job. So he is basically trying to look down his intellectual nose at us. Now, as I said, I initially declined it for that reason. And what I did is I actually threw another, I drew something back at him. I said, I'm not going to do that for reasons of it being condescending and blah, 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 and arrogant. But what I said to him, as I said, if you can prove that the horizon we see is physical and geometric and adheres to 
the global model mathematics that are confined to that sorry that is confined that are confined to a, a radius of 3959 miles um I, I said it a little bit better than that i wrote it a little bit better than that but that's the basis basics of it i said i delete my channel and he wouldn't give me a yes or no on it i asked him about it uh, and he just came back with a lot of a lot of waffle so I take it as a personal attack that he attacked me in that way because he's attacking my intellect and my education. It's not that now, right, is it? It's it, it, you've summed it up. They probably wouldn't get. I hate physics. I'd probably fail A level physics now. Uh, but um, the, it's not that. Do you see what they're prepared to gamble? They're now prepared to gamble their whole channel. Yeah. On the premise, and this is how their mind appears to be working, that the Earth is definitely a ball. If Brian or if we can get Brian or Flatsoid to take A level physics paper, and if they fail, it shows that we were definitely right. Yeah, that's what they're left with, clinging on to to support their ball. And as soon as you say, "Well, just give us a bit of evidence for your ball," they, oh, they can't yeah, that, that's right, they'll engage doesn't... with you in this desk. That's all they've got, mate. Yeah. yeah, that's the only proof that they've got that that if Brian doesn't pass A level physics paper, the Earth's the ball. That's the level they're at, mate. It's it's, it's laughable, isn't Me it? Meanwhile, the response. Meanwhile, the response from Brian is, um, "How about you just answer one of the questions that's on topic <laughs> that we've asked multitudes of times, which is to say, show us a physical geometric sphere edge horizon, and okay, if this is going to be made about deleting channels, then what? I'll wager my channel then also." Okay, well, that's obviously your prerogative, Brian. But by the same token, it's like your response is, let's not test an individual and their personal understanding of A-level physics. Let's test the nature of reality rather than one man. That's pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. Well, the reason it's true on my channel there, because I had not Nels to throw it, I had not Nels. But I also made the point to him is that how many other flat earthers would be deleting their channels if he could prove this? Because that would mean that proving the horizon is a physical geometric location that matches a certain ge geometry as per an observer's elevation. Now, I know they can't do that because it's a lot of rubbish. You know, I have nothing to lose. I, doesn't, I have nothing to lose. I can't lose. And they have everything to win. But they can't, won't do it because they know it's an impossibility. What, what do they win, Brian? What do they win? That you didn't spend hours revising for an A-level physics paper? That look, you've more than clearly done it. Whether you've got these academic qualifications or not, you've shown on these stuff, you've humiliated them, you've gone in, and you've shown you've got more cognition than they've got to take apart this, analyse it, and understand it, and then explain it to other people, right? Really high-level stuff that I've learned from you. So it, what... What's their opinion worth? That you know what I mean? It, their opinion on what? Their opinion on yeah. Brian? No, no offense, Brian. Yeah. I know that tone sounds bad, but and, and don't take this the wrong way. I don't care about how smart Brian is. You know, I don't assess the information he puts out there on how smart Brian is. It's purely assessed on the information. Now, Brian's response to this is: Tell me about the nature of a sphere, Earth, and its physical parameters. In other words, answer me on topic. What are they concerned about? The truth about Brian? Oh, yeah, because that's groundbreaking stuff. No offence, Brian. I know this sounds very bad towards Brian. I know he gets that I'm not meaning it the way it sounds to some. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Brian is a smart bloke. That's my point, Nathan, right? Brian has demonstrated, right, not just being able to revise facts which is what taking an a-level thing is yeah he's actually gone out there and demonstrated irrespective stop, of any stop 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 it... stop that's what they're making this about let's assess yeah. it based on whether or not brian's smart or not well brian is smart well what's the response from their side gonna be well let's test that then so what let's make this about how smart brian is no well you see the this hey, from the background hey thanks 
This yeah, listen, I, it, hang on one second. With your permission, I put your challenge on Master B for Nathan to show just the, your challenge itself. Oh, yeah, 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 text. that's fine. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah what okay. I put in, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, there was a, a few other bits in that message because I was being accused of deleting comments and stuff off my channel, and I wasn't. I don't know what's going on there. YouTube up to something. Even Flat Earth's comments, like, gleams that have been deleted. But anyway. Uh, <clears throat> Sorry, I lost myself there. Oh, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. The thing about this is this, right? <clears throat> what has what led to this is conspiracy cats try to change the mind of YouTuber Reiji, a girl uh, from Birmingham. He tried to change her mind away from being a flat earther, and he made a video. And I only watched the first 12 and a half minutes of the video, and I made two 20 minutes, or the best part of 20 minutes, uh, uh, videos on that 12 and a half minutes, correcting a load of stuff he was wrong about concerning gravity. And I gave citation, everything, right? And on top of that, the other day I brought out a video of a demonstration of how the sun rise and sets on a, on a flat plane. Now, today I brought out an even better one of the same topic. And that's where that's coming from. It's attacking me on a load of nonsense instead of them not being able to stop the demonstration. And I also gave with I also gave with my demonstration before I had made two videos the other day. Before that video of the demonstration of how this how sunrise and sunset works, right? Physical demonstration of it. Before that, I also detailed the very YouTuber that he was trying to change the mind of, Rachie, who made an observation of a tower that's a tower light that's eight miles away from her and 946 feet higher above her actual viewing location above sea level. Yet she's looking at the light in the, her direct horizontal, or she, she actually says slightly below her horizontal view. They have zero, absolutely zero comeback. They can't come up with refraction. They can come up with nothing. And I'm trying to get more people to make these observations because they can't say anything. Because they hand wave away stuff with someone who's a layman. They can send a, t send a layman away when the layman comes up with a, the black swan photograph. They can say, or any black swan photograph, they can say, oh, that's just refraction. If someone does and throw a lot of math at the person, the person walk away. They can't do that with this. Now, I'm not saying that that kills the, the black swan. I'm not saying it does. I'm just saying that they can do that and hand wave away the black swan by shouting refraction and throwing mathematics at someone who doesn't know any better at the moment because people aren't educated in it. But this is slightly different. They can hand wave dismiss anything, though. Well, yes. this is kind of slightly no. different. How? The point. Tell me about this thing that a baller cannot just hand wave dismiss. Well, like, what they don't, they can't throw anything at it. They to them they and you say, oh, it, they'll just hand wave dismiss it. So they have nothing, yeah, they, they have nothing to throw at these things. This particular type of an observation, they have nothing to throw at it. They can't claim anything. Eight mile distance, the most you have is like it's 46 or something feet of drop or 42 or something feet of drop. There's 946 feet above her viewing observation, and it's only eight miles away, and she's looking at it just below her, she reckons just below her horizontal view. There's a real world observation of optical drop. And I'm showing, and when you see my video today, and there's more and better demonstrations coming, I'm showing how a sunrise and sunset works on a flat plane, and how this nonsense about when you move away down, if you move south, if once you're north of the equator and you move south, due south, how Polaris will drop in the sky. This shows exactly how that would happen on a flat plane. Now Perfect, so I'll plug you Brian. So subscribe today to Brian's Logic and uh, check out his latest video in response to Conspiracy Cats. With that, I'm going to say a huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making today's after show possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of you in either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley Primary Streams for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video.